qualified Euros 2024 in Germany when the host nation has been kicked out of the competition by almighty Spain. Spain is still in the France with Portugal. Penalties and France are still in the competition. Cristiano Ronaldo, Portugal is out of the competition currently. And yesterday, another magic of magics happened. Almighty England actually battled in penalties with Switzerland. That's not the first time. This is one of the reasons why you should stay tuned to listen to more of what is happening because this is not the first time Switzerland and England going to penalties in Euros. But hey, the other game that you thought it was just something that we could just while away time, but it rather proved difficult and exciting. Very, very, very exciting. Netherlands proof why they have the likes of Van Dijk, Elko, and also they are just a unique of a team. Turkey didn't actually allow them to just control the game because they have the likes of Ada Gula, a fantastic boy who had the assist of the first goal in the game. Turkey was just marvelous. Stay tuned. I'm here today with Sami and Emmanuel. And remember, if you just join us and you are new, hit the subscription button, like and share the video, and we are going to get you through the excitement of this game. Well, Ima, first game, let's talk about the host nation, Germany versus Spain. All along, I've been telling you, you seem not to satisfy with Spain's squad because you thought they were too young to actually perform in this competition. And here we are, they knocked out of the host nation. What do you make up of that game? Spain, Germany game, it's one of the best games of the Euros I've watched so far. Uh, you know, you can see the technicality and the tactics in play from both coaches. At the end of the day, Spain proved to uh, have, have upper hand on um. Germany. For me, I think it was a good match. It was just a hard luck for the German national team, you know, playing at home with the supporters and everything. I thought maybe they would just have a slim win over Spain, but Spain were proven very stubborn and they, they got the win at the end of the of the day. They get the winner. Sami, Sami, what do you make up? Okay, so first, let me talk about the technicality of the game. I think uh, both sides was, was, was good. I think they were all good. And that is why I, 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 want, to, I want to thank the coaches of playing such a beautiful game. We saw that um, Germany pressed Spain, did not allow Spain to play their normal football. That is one tactic that um, the German national team used. But at the end of the day, we saw that um, it, the, 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 the quality of the Spanish was too much. The likes of Alvaro Morata, the likes of Yami Yamal, Nico Williams, so they could not uh, stop them. And coming to the, the handball, after the game, there was a lot of discussion and UEFA themselves sent um, a message saying that it was right, it was the right decision, showcasing that this current Euro, the handball rule is that if the hand is in a vertical position, it's not, it shouldn't be taken as a handball. And if we watch, his hand was truly vertical, it was pointing downwards, and that shows that that was his natural position. If you stand by yourself and your hand is by yourself, you see that your hand is not pointing upwards, it's downwards. So in that regard, that is why the referee did not take a penalty. So per the rules of UEFA, it was right. But if you want to compare with different rules of UEFA, you see that no, it should have been a penalty. So then every tournament brings about every rule. So that is what people should get. So the penalty itself wasn't a penalty. I'm um, adding a little to what Sami said. I think UEFA are just trying to save the image of the Euros. Because looking at the ball and the direction of the ball, for me, I think it was a penalty. Maybe we are not clear on that side from what the explanation is, but for me personally, I think it was a penalty. Well, well yeah. with, when it comes to the handball issue, there has been a controversy, even not because of this Euro. The rules are not being clear Absolutely. enough for a lot of yes. people. So I don't want us to get much into that. So, I mean, no, no, no. What just, I want... just to say something. Uh -huh. One thing okay. you should know is that every competition, they have their own rules. And that is what makes okay. it complicated. So like this okay. current rule, Euros, they have their rules. If you look okay. at Copa America, they have their rules regarding the handball. So okay. regarding what they, they had, their rules, it shows that mm -hmm. it's not a penalty. But if you take okay. different times, then it's a penalty. But regarding the UFS rule for Euros 2024, it's not a penalty. I'm, I'm taking you to uh, the incident between Pedri and Oni Cruz. 
don't you think if Pedri was to stay in that game, that game wouldn't even go to uh, extra time? Spain would have finished up the game. Um, Pedri going out of the game, uh, out of the game was a blessing in disguise for the Spanish national team. Bringing on Dani Omo also increased the chances of the attack. You know, when he yeah. takes the ball, he's direct. Pedri is more like, um, let me distribute the passes and everything. But Dani Omo, because of he's playing as a winger in RB Leipzig, he has this attacking instinct. So it was a blessing in disguise for them. Yeah, and they 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 had the results. France and Portugal, we know they are giant countries when it comes to Euros, and they battle it. Like, the game was not so excited as I expected it. But the technicality of the game, that makes me, like, very, very much concentrated on the game, even though I didn't actually finish with it. What do you make up of that game generally? Generally, I think um, that was one of the boring games I saw. Looking at the quality both teams possess, this this Euros have been a disappointment to me, especially in regards to my support for Portugal. Seeing the kind of quality they have and still trying to play uh, long balls to Ronaldo, it was just bad. Looking at France too, on the other side too, France is noted for not playing good football. It's a normal thing. France is like England. They will never play any good football that you'll be, you, you, you be appreciative of. But then, Portugal having this quality, see how they were not able to use uh, Bruno Fernandes. They were not able to use uh, Leao and Ronaldo. I was expecting that the changes from the coach even would have even touched Ronaldo, not the other way around. So I think that game, um, yes, France won, but I think the fault should be given to the coach because the substitution was really bad. Uh, Portugal and France, we saw like there was a lot of tension in that game. There wasn't goals in that game. Because there was lack of goals in the game, that made it so boring or to view a different ball game entirely because I wasn't so impressed with both performances. Um, I wasn't impressed either because looking at two teams, we expected much from them, especially France. And the way they've played, uh, for me, it's not to the best level. You know, maybe going forward against Spain, they might prove us wrong. But for me personally, I think the French national team has been disappointing. Maybe it's time the Shams gets handed the team over to someone else for them to just continue. Because I think his ideas and everything is, is done. Yeah, for the French national team, it's done. They can play a very good football with the players they have. But, you know, it's like they are more defensive. Defensively, they have been good. But, you know, you can't have Kylian Mbappe, Osmane Dembele, Marcos Turam, and, you know, you have scoring just... You've not, you've not scored a goal from open play. It's just bad. For me, I think they have to do better. Yeah. Against Spain. They have to do better against Spain. I mean, lastly, how the penalties. Don't you think Portugal was very optimistic that when it comes to penalties, Diego Costa could save them as he saved them in their other penalty kickouts? Yeah, definitely. You know, when it went to penalties, they were happy. They were they were like, he has done it before, so he can, he can do it again. But then, um, this time, luck was not on their side. And uh, Jao Felix spoils the penalty and it's it got Portugal out. Um, I think penalties is everyone's game. I usually don't don't base myself on penalties, but I base myself on the 90 minutes and the extra time. Portugal had the opportunity to do what they were supposed to do. In fact, looking at the, I always say, looking at the quality Portugal has, this this it should have been a walkthrough against France. But then I will still blame the coach for what he did. The substitution was poor. <laughs> England Switzerland is a game of thrones for sure. This game, I thought it was just a downhill for England with the quality they have. But this is not the first time they've been through to penalty. You could remember last Euros, it was the same thing. They went to penalties together, but then England won that game through penalties. Ima, you were talking about, the last time we were talking about England, we were talking about the coach playing players out of position. Yesterday, I saw the, still saw the same thing, playing Bellingham at the uh, left wing and then Saka, and then there wasn't even switch. Do you think he's to be blamed for England performance? Because yesterday was just something different. Yeah, for me, as I said earlier on, for the English national team, it's just a matter of time. They'll be eliminated from the competition. With Southgate and the way he's combining the players on the field, He's just not having this idea of how to use the players. Sometimes he use Bellingham as an eight. Sometimes he play him as a ten. Yesterday he switched Phil Ford into the right side of the attack, and it was good. But looking at their general play, Hurricane is not the Hurricane we used to know, and their team is not gelling. I think yesterday Switzerland just had a bad luck. They could have just eliminated them within the ninety minutes, but it was rather unfortunate. 
they, they lost on penalties. But for me, I think they had a very good competition. Kudos to the Swiss national team. They did very well. Yeah. Sami, the technicality of the game, we saw him, Southgate didn't actually attempt to make substitution. When Switzerland was doing all everything to actually get a win from the game, he waited until they had a, a, a one goal down before he bring in some players to actually change the game for. Do you think he was he was right? When it comes to Southgate, honestly, I, 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 I honestly don't see his managerial position. I don't see his, his, his tactics. So it was not surprising for me that when they went one goal down, he brought in strikers to come and get an equalizer. As Ima said earlier, it was it was a hard luck for Switzerland because they deserved to win. And um, the luck was on the side of England. Looking at Saka's goal from nowhere, cutting in and playing the shots, and that that transformed the game. But still, you saw the composure of the the Swiss, the way they play. They hold the ball, they pass, they try to move. But you see the likes of uh, England. It, it, it's, there's nothing you can talk about. Like there's nothing you can actually say. That, okay, this was playing nice. The only thing I can say is Wansa, if I'm if I'm mistaken. I think he yeah. had he had a very nice game. Aside that, I do not see anybody really really impressing. I do not see Saka for scoring his goal, but without that, I do not see anything. So, um, I I just hope that they would they would they would they would do well in the next game. I don't want them to go. I want them to be in the final, but I I pray that they do well. Uh, Ima, I heard. Uh, was it? Is it Kariga or Jimmy Kariga or yeah. who was that? Jimmy Kariga. Yeah, I heard him on the commentary saying that. Before even the first half of the game, that this was the first time they could see England playing as a unit, like as a team, not as an yeah. For them, for them, they they are always biased. You know, the English pundits for them they are always biased, and you know it's it's just a normal thing from them. They will just say the thing just to please the um, supporters and everything. But going on, like looking at the team very well, England is not the best of the of, of teams in the semi-finals right now. For me, I think against the Dutch, they will, they will find it very difficult. Personally, I think they will be eliminated in the next round, yeah. But they are not playing the best of football in their competition. It's just a normal play and, you know, there's nothing special about their play. But, I mean, what surprised me was Cole Palmer came in as a substitute and was the first person who took penalty for England. Yeah, that shows the, the confidence the guy is having. He's had a brilliant season. He's showing the coach that he has to start. He wants to start. But he's not given the opportunity. So any little, little opportunity he gets, he wants to still show, make a statement that, hey, I'm here. I can do it. And yes, he, we all saw the brilliant penalty he took. And yeah, he deserves to start. Ima, before we move to uh, the last game, that is uh, Netherlands Turkey. Uh, I want Maguire. Maguire actually did not start this game because of accumulated yellow cards. Do you think that actually affected England in the back? Um, for me, I think his replacement um, was even better than him. For for what I saw yesterday from Kwanzaa, he had a very excellent game. Oh, he's one of the players who impressed me yesterday. He held the defence very well. For me, I think going forward, Maggie coming back to the team for their next game, I think he I prefer Kwanzaa over Maggie because he gives a lot of stability at the defence and it's good for them. But for me, I think even with the defensive duties, the midfielders and the attackers should do better. Because yesterday the, the defenders did well, but for the middle and the attack, it's just awful. Netherland Turkey, the game that I probably didn't want to watch, but then it ended up proving me like wrong because the game was so intense. Even at a point when uh, Turkey actually go ahead to get that first goal, I thought that was it. But in the end, Netherlands still proved their quality. Sami, what yeah, did you so make Turkey, up of that game? Turkey has shown the world what they are capable of. And the tactics from the coach has been brilliant, especially having players who are that fast. It shows that any team they meet, in fact, if they had met England, like England would really suffer. That's, but unfortunately, um, they were eliminated. Look at the speed they play. They, they, they don't hold the ball so much, but any time they get the ball, they're on the counter. And we saw how Van Dijk yesterday suffered a lot. In fact, looking at the quality of defender like Van Dijk suffering, getting cut, it was it was brilliant to watch. But anyway, the as you said, the Netherlands has the quality. They kept their composure. This first half, I think they played nothing really. They had few chances in the early five, ten minutes. And after after that, we did not see the the team again. We saw how compact the Turkey uh, defense was. Everyone playing their part. And also 
until the dying minutes of the second half. That is when the Netherlands came in with 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 the two goals. But then, I think kudos to them, and I hope to see them in the World Cup. I, I want to see them do better. The team we have to look out for them. <laughs> the Turkish national team yesterday played their their hearts out. For me, I thought it was going to be a walkover for the Dutch team, but you know they proved me wrong yesterday. Looking at the way they scored the first goal with a sweet assist from um, Ada Gule and, you know, them pushing hard for an equalizer, you can see that they have the zeal and the passion to play for the badge, you know, the flag and everything. For me, I think it was a, it was one, one of the best games too, because looking at it was an end-to-end action. Yeah, you could see that the Dutch were attack and the, when Teki also are on the attack, it's very dangerous. It was just a game and I loved it because, you know, when you see teams performing to that level, you can see like it makes the game very beautiful. So kudos to the Turkish national team too. And, you know, their supporters too are amazing. The way they rocked the stadium yesterday, it was just amazing. Yeah, it was amazing. For me, I think they are one of the teams to watch going forward and they can build on this performance to do better in their next competition. Yes. So if you just join us and you are new, remember to hit the subscription button, like and share the video. And hey, it's a community that we are building. And you know that if you so just improve join anyone's and is and brown. No, 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 no,